it has been definitely a challenge to figure out, okay, how am I bringing new life into this world and establishing our own family while also mourning the loss of my family of origin? And what does that mean as a daughter of God? What does that mean as a daughter of my mother and father who are no longer married and we're no longer this family unit that we were before? Welcome to Mamas in Spirit, a podcast pointing you towards God in everything you are and everything you do. I'm Lindy Wynn, and it's a blessing to be with you. A blessing it always is to be together in the Holy Spirit. Welcome, everyone. And today, we are also here with Elise Gallagher of Ringlet. Elise, thank you so much for being with us. Hi, Lindy. I am thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And Elise is a pro because she has her own podcast, so I should just have you lead. (laughs) Oh my goodness. No, we just launched the Roll Your Way podcast through Ringlet in the last couple of weeks. So we're still working at kinks and figuring it out, but it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. And just so everyone knows, Ringlet is an innovative impact company that provides integrated marketing for small businesses. And it sounds so funny, but I was so excited before this recording and my heart was just swelling with joy, which Aww. also sounds funny, but no. for two reasons. Well, this is kind of the funny part of it is that (laughs) not only to delve into how you are called into this vocation in your business, a small V vocation, Mm. and how you bring all of your faithfulness and your prayerfulness and your love of God into business. And as a working woman and mother, you are almost going to have another baby, right? Baby yes. two? Baby number two. Yes. We have a girl who is about 14 months and we are waiting for baby girl number two any day now. Wonderful. So excited. So if everyone can please keep Elise in prayer for that, the most exciting thing of all that we could talk Thank about. You. <laughs> and the other thing that is not, it's not exciting to talk about, but it is because maybe too, because my parents are divorced. Mm. Elise's are as well. And she brought up a new term to me when we talked the first time about a week ago gray divorce. And that is when couples divorce in their older years. I think it's mm-hmm. around 60-ish plus, mm-hmm. so 50s, 60s and beyond. And and my parents, I, I've never even thought about how old they were at that time. They were probably in their 40s. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, I'm in my 40s. <laughs> I'm 45, everybody, in case you wanted to know. <laughs> so anyways, um, I'm looking forward to impacting this. And Elise and I talked for a minute that often, I think this is a quote that from our wounds often comes our calling or that we're mm-hmm. sharpened through through healing to, to discover God's call in our hearts and in our lives. And so Elise is going to be taking us on that journey today for her. And mm-hmm. so let us begin like we always do and always remember that Mamas in Spirit is always about pointing each one of us individually and personally, sacredly into the heart of Jesus in our prayer life and relationship with the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, you are so good to us because you are in everything. You are in everything that is good, that is healing, that is love, that is merciful. Scripture tells us who you are and you are glorious. You are a rock and our cornerstone. You are what stabilizes us and solidifies us, grounds us, and is our refuge during times of trial and suffering in our life, but also just in times of delight, times of joy, everything, everything, Lord, that is good. We want to thank you for that. We want to praise you for who you are and who you have created us to be, your beloved daughters and sons in Christ. We pray that today is a day and this moment is a moment where we deepen in that and that every experience in our light ultimately helps us to do just that, to enter more deeply, to pilgrimage more closely into your loving and eternal heart. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So Elise, I would love for you just to start at the beginning of your journey and your story. Of course. So my hope in sharing my story today is if there's any Catholic woman out there who feels siloed or lonely in her own experience of divorce, 
within her family that she feels understood and a little less lonely through me sharing my story. This is the first time that I've really shared it publicly. So bear with me if it's a little, a little jumbled, but this has been an ongoing journey for me and experiencing family and marriage for, I mean, forever, right? We all grow with it within a family. My parents' marriage has always been tumultuous. My dad I think he would identify as Christian, but he's not a practicing Christian. My mom is a practicing Catholic, a faithful Catholic, and I'm so grateful that both of them provided so much for myself and my siblings. I'm the oldest of four. I have a younger sister and two younger brothers. And my grandparents, my mom's parents, were particularly very devout Catholics. And we, my mom took us to Mass every Saturday evening with my grandparents. And that was really the point of time growing up in witnessing my grandparents' faith that I learned the rosary and was sent to Catholic school during that time as well. I'm so grateful that my parents made a lot of sacrifices for myself and my siblings to attend Catholic schools, particularly middle school and high school, which had a ginormous impact on on me and my siblings. So I'm, yes, very, I want to say that I'm very grateful for my parents that they provided so much for me and my siblings. My dad's a lawyer. He's had his own law firm for the last 30 years. He has really created a tremendous company that has served a lot of people, which is incredible to see. My mom was a stay-at-home mom and supported my dad throughout his growing of the company and raised my siblings and I. And growing up, I knew that there was discord within their marriage. I remember hearing them arguing was like one of my first memories and feeling as if I needed to be like the peacemaker within the family. And as we grew up, I think their relationship really took a turn for the worse when I actually went to college. My family moved during that time. They moved the fall of my freshman year of college. I attended the Catholic University of America. And my siblings were really left with a quite difficult family life and that my dad was working more and it was really just my my siblings and my mom. And there was a lot going on. They had four, you know, three teenagers um, under one roof. And I was starting college nearby and had a, parenting never stops, right? Even if you're kids in college, there's still a lot going on. And in 2016, my parents ended up separating. So that was the time when my youngest brother started his freshman year in college. And they... Yes, separated for about a year. And then they actually got back together a few weeks before my husband and I got married in 2017, and then separated again in 2019, end of 2019, beginning of 2020. And my dad is remarried. And it has taken a lot of therapy and a lot of spiritual direction in the last specifically two years to really understand the impacts of gray divorce. I think a lot of times older children feel the pressure to not feel anything about their parents' divorce. That Because they're adults, they should feel as if I now have my own life as an adult, my parents have their own life as adults, and if they decide to divorce, that shouldn't affect me. I think there's this trope in our culture where people think it's better to get divorced later once the kids are grown up because yes, they think you know they're going to be able to emotionally handle it. But my experience has been that because my parents decided to divorce later in life, that my idea of my family structure and what I knew for 30 years was destroyed, came tumbling down. And that has been extremely difficult. And so accepting the fact that, yes, my parents are divorced are going, is going to affect me even in my late 20s and, and early 30s, that this is not easy. This is something that I should not feel shame about, that I can work through with my family and to mention my therapist and and spiritual director and and with the church and and through the strength of the sacraments, that has been freeing to not have that shame of feeling as if this shouldn't affect me. My husband is also a child of divorce. His parents divorced when he was seven years old. So our experience uh, experiences of divorce has been so different. He, although he of course he was affected by his parents' divorce. 
he didn't know his fam- same family structure for 30 years. He knew it for about five or six before his parents separated. And he's had a good amount of time to work through, <laughs> to work through the effects of that divorce and, and his family separation and family dynamics. So it's been very interesting to see how we both have been affected by divorce at different seasons of our lives. Elise, I'm over here thinking, I just love you. And I get to look at Elise because we're on YouTube now, <laughs> so even though that's not the predominant way that I told Elise that that mom's spirit is listened to. But I, I bring that up, Elise, because I think it's very courageous of you uh, to share you. all of this. And, and this is a topic that even though it's been one of the most significant journeys for me, even in my own life, mm. that directly has not been looked at and kind of peeled back the layers of through mamas and spirit. And so I thank you for your courage because you talked about shame, Mm -hmm. the shame experience in like, I'm an adult, like I I shouldn't have feelings about this or maybe too even sometimes like in my own experience, I'll talk about my parents were 19. I I was 19 when my parents separated and my younger brother was still at home and my older Mm -hmm. brother was in college and I was just entering college. So I was already in a major transition Mm -hmm. of leaving. But I, I, I bring that up because divorce, and this is not meant to shame anyone, but there is a part of it that it's very self-focused even for the parents because Mm -hmm. it's a massive transition and change for them in their lives and sometimes utterly devastating. Mm -hmm. We've had people on Mamas in Spirit where there's been infidelity, alcoholism to the point of needing to like protect the children. Mm -hmm. But there's also shame on that side because because of that, never wanting to put the children through what Mm -hmm. the children are experiencing. So there's a million different dynamics that we could explore here. But what I want to focus on is at least that for you, and I've experienced this too, that that feeling of needing to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, like n- to not have as many feelings about this or to be like for me, like be the stability or the rock or the cornerstone, mine being the Lord and then me for my family because there's all this tumult going on. So mm-hmm. who am I to have feelings about this right. amidst all of this this chaos. And so I think this is a, an incredibly vulnerable topic and an incredibly difficult topic. So most of all, I just, I want to affirm you, Elise, oh, you. and I'm, I'm so honored and moved that this is the first time that you're sharing this, this publicly. And I, I want to ask you too, because, um, my own dad got remarried two months, I think, after I got married. So oh my really goodness. interesting dynamics. Yeah. So what I, what I'm wondering for you, Elise, is, here you are, you and your husband are both come from families who, who have divorced parents. And then you're also, you were creating your own family Mm -hmm. and, and your own marriage and, and entering into that. And you've brought up therapy and spiritual direction. What has this journey been like for you? And where are kind of those like deepest vulnerabilities and layers for you in, in all of this? Mm -hmm. I think, one, I am so grateful that we, Hunter and I have lived in the time of history that we that we are, because because I feel like I have so many resources at my fingertips um, regarding divorce and, and figuring out how to navigate it, mainly through therapy and, and spiritual counseling, um, as you mentioned. But also, there are so many great books out there about great divorce. Hopefully, we can link to some in, in the show notes. And that has been key to do research, to feel like, okay, I'm not going crazy, (laughs) that there are actually psychologists who are researching this, that this is a topic that has affected thousands and thousands of lives. And I think what is really uh, something else that has really helped Hunter and I is having marriage mentors. So couples through our lives that have modeled for us what a healthy Catholic marriage looks like, a faithful Catholic marriage. I know that's one of my mom's greatest sorrows is that she wasn't able to model that for us. That's really a cross for her. And we, the Lord has provided for us some amazing couples who have given us almost like a template of what it looks like to raise children. I lived with a family while I was in grad school who had, I think at the time, four little boys under six. And um, the husband was a lawyer. My husband's uh, now a lawyer and the wife was wonderful and we just were able to grow in relationship with them. And they, I think, are about like 10 years ahead of where of where we are. And seeing how 
they're not only salt and light in the world through um, the husband's work as a lawyer, but also raising a beautiful Catholic family that lives um, a liturgical lifestyle who is, you know, going to mass on Sundays and practicing the faith at home and integrating that into their daily lives was really beautiful. Um, And we've come across a few other mentors in the last few years who have been able to model for us what it would look like, what our goal is, you know, as, as a Catholic couple, I think sometimes as a couple, we don't have a vision for what you want your life and your marriage to look like. You feel like you're floundering. At least that's been my experience. And that's not to say you have like solid plans in place. Our life looks very different than what we thought it would uh, when we first got married five years ago. Uh, But it's been a beautiful journey and the Lord has molded us and molded our lives into hopefully what he desires it to be. But I, I think having clear communication between the spouses of respect and I expect clear communication and to pray a rosary each week and to um, go to mass each week and to connect each each day, even if it's just for five minutes. I think Hunter and I were reflecting this weekend on how truly I feel like the battle um, between good and evil is being fought through families, right? That's what Our Lady of Fatima revealed, that we are truly, the families are the battleground. Um, and what that looks like is my husband being present to me while I cannot pick up the baby. And <laughs> he is taking on so much extra housework and um, helped me through this pregnancy. And that might seem small, but it is truly heroic. It's been really beautiful to to see that. So anyway, I hope that answers your, <laughs> your question. I could go on for marriage and family, talk about marriage and family for a while. Yes. I, I appreciate everything that you're saying and how you're talking about all of these resources because the image that comes to, to mind for me, Elise, and to heart, and I'm wondering if you can share any example from this, is that, for example, like when, when I, I'll speak for myself, when I read scripture or when I read a book that's a resource for a particularly vulnerable area in mm. my own life or I've gone to counseling in my own life or I've gone to spiritual direction, there's specific moments that just speak to the soul Mm. that I'll never forget because they touch most deeply on my fragility and what's most painful for me in that situation and their healing. Like the gift and the blessing of whatever is shared is deeply healing. And you talked about things being kind of messy, used a different word, but kind of messy. But then in those moments, it's like clarity Mm -hmm. and peace and serenity and a knowing that where the Lord is and where the Lord is inviting, whether it be in my marriage or in a relationship with one of my parents or whatnot. Is there a time in, in all of these things that you've engaged in that have touched specifically on one of the parts that have been the most difficult for you. So I'd ask, what is that part? Like what's been most difficult for you with your parents divorcing? Like Mm -hmm. what's, what's the hardest part of that for you? And then how, how has that been healed or touched upon? And I know we're all healing in process. I'm still healing in process. Yes, absolutely. So can you share that with us? Yes. Through divorce, I have had to relook at how I define my identity. Um, especially as a daughter and especially as a daughter to a mom and a daughter to a dad and what motherhood and fatherhood looks like in my life. I think it was extremely difficult to, I've been pregnant or um, postpartum for the last two years as this has been happening. So it has been definitely a challenge to figure out, okay, how am I bringing new life into this world and establishing our own family, as you mentioned before, while also mourning the loss of my family of origin And what does that mean as a daughter of God? What does that mean as a daughter of my mother and father who are no longer married and we're no longer this family unit that we were before? So in counseling, I have really worked through my relationship to my mom and my relationship to my dad. What has been healing is seeing both of those relationships through the lens of the Blessed Mother and through God the Father. I remember my counselor asking me, do you feel closest to God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, or um, Jesus Christ? And I definitely was like, yeah, I feel close to the Holy Spirit, feel close to Jesus Christ, but 
gosh, God, the father, I have no idea. <laughs> that just feels so foreign to me, that relationship. And so I've really had to dive deep into those father wounds and where those come from, the memories, the trauma that I've had to revisit, um, which takes work. I think that's something I want to make clear too, that this is healing process. It takes money and resources. And I'm very grateful that I have been able to have access to those. But if you don't, there is a amazing ministry, life-giving wounds ministry that is for adult children of divorce. They have been extremely helpful as well. They have great book studies and um, some retreats. So I'd highly recommend looking into their ministry, but um, also looking into my relationship with my mother that I think feels a little, I was reflecting on this a little more, I feel a little more closure with that relationship at this present moment. I really grew a devotion to the rosary in the last couple of years, um, trying to have say a daily rosary. And I never felt close to Mary, um, our Blessed Mother, through college and through my reversion and then in my young professional life. But in the last few years, I have really grown close to her. Her her own motherhood has guided me in how to approach my own motherhood and then also healing those mother wounds that I had from gr- growing up in a very, you, you mentioned chaos, a very chaotic household. I so appreciate you delving into into the depths of that because in the very beginning, you used very important words because I think that divorce has been very minimized mm-hmm. in our secular culture throughout time. Even when my parents got divorced many, many years ago now, I can't even do the math. I'm getting too old for that quick break. <laughs> but you talked about mourning and loss and there's mm-hmm. grief that comes with divorce. And what came to my heart is... I still miss one of my dearest friends in heaven. And like Mm. the other day, I saw a picture of her glorious glowing daughter and I just Mm. teared up and cried because she reminded me so much of her mother and it just reminded me of how much I miss her. Mm -hmm. When parents divorce, there's a loss and a grief that lasts a lifetime. This is something in my mid forties that, that me and, and my siblings that we still respond to, that we still navigate. Now we have aging parents who are divorced. My dad was remarried and divorced again. And I, I love my parents beyond articulation. And there are parts of this that are incredibly difficult and remain incredibly difficult. Yet what I think, Elise, you're touching upon are are two very important things. One is, is that God navigates with and for us when we allow the Lord to and, and points us towards the Lord. Because I remember, and Elise, I'm wondering if you can identify with this, when I first got married at 23, not having any idea of how to be married and how to be Mm. a wife and how for Mm -hmm. this to be in any way good and of the Lord. And I've mentioned this on other podcasts and in other talks that I wrote a prayer and it's like a a very short one. I might've even just written marriage and stuck it in my Bible. And just basically my prayer was like, Lord, help me to do this. Like Mm. help me to be a good wife. I think that was one of my greatest vulnerabilities. And it almost makes me tear up because thinking back to that as a 23-year-old, now 22 years later, it's like, wow, Lord, you are miraculous. And I want everyone listening to know that whether you have been divorced, and I know, like I said, we've had people who have been divorced who have been in very painful situations. Those are situations that cut people at the core of their being and the sense of their Mm. value as a human being. I mean, it's so difficult. But also, if you are a child of a tumultuous marriage that was never was never divorced or, or a parent that had an addiction or anything else of the sort that was very, very difficult, or you are a child of divorce, God is good and all redeeming and miraculous mm. and wonderful, and God will show you the way. God will show you the way directly through sacraments, through scripture, and through other holy examples. God will transform your heart and your mind and your soul. Like Elise, you said that so beautifully. You talked about your parents and seeing your parents through God's eyes and seeing your parents holistically like their hearts and being able to look upon them through the eyes of our Blessed Mother too. And really, that is the only way because Mm. 
at least for me, like in myself, left to my own devices, I'm not capable of that kind of forgiveness. I'm not capable of like hanging in there. And when I look back on my own experience and I think of some of the conversations I've had, for example, with my dad that were very difficult. You said, Elise, it takes work and it does. Mm -hmm. It takes work. It takes vulnerability. It takes like that time and time again of going back to the Lord for the Lord to guide. I can't believe some of the conversations that I've had that were loving yet so honest and so vulnerable. Like I think of my dad in Mm. particular, yet that, that were, praise God, also because my dad was open, healing. And the other Mm. thing you talked about, Elise, was like that you had to heal your father wounds and your mother wounds. And I know that Sonia Corbett talks a lot about this too in her work. So I want to point everybody there as well. But our woundedness, our father wounds, our, our mother wounds that we have to separate our human parents and even ourselves from mm. our holy mother and our holy father. Mm. And that's like critical in healing and who knowing who the Lord is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I attended the John Paul II Institute for a year um, studying for, towards a master's in marriage and family. And I remember some philosopher, I'm not going to remember the name, it's been almost 10 years now, but he gave this metaphor that in the progression of maturing as Christians, we have to turn our gaze from our mother and looking for our identity in our parents as a young, you know, holding as a mother, holding a young child, holding a baby you can imagine when you're staring at your child that you're you're communicating so much to them, right? They're just looking to you for everything. And as a child, we receive that and our parents truly are our worlds. And as we mature, and I think I, I've in- encountered shame in myself and feeling like it's taken me a while to get there. But I hope that's encouraging for other people who are still in this process of shifting their gaze from their parents to find their identity to the Lord, because that can be abstract. You know, I think I've had a hard time coming to understand what that what that means. Um, for me right now, that that means constantly when I find that like desire within me to receive love or affirmation or guidance going to the Lord first and really I'm encountering him in the sacraments and adoration and confession and the Eucharist. But it's a process. It's an ongoing process and learning how to uh, find our identity in Christ. Yes. And I appreciate how you use the word shame because I think that that's a really important word that describes the depth of your experience. And at least since I had a second, I did the math while I was listening to you. And I realized my parents separated 26 years ago. I think that they were also married about the same time between 24 and 26 years. So this is the first time I've realized that those times in my life are now equal. Mm -hmm. The time they were together and the time that that they were, they were apart. But my point of that 26 years is at least I'm still on that journey. Mm-hmm. We're all always still on that journey. And I always think like there's no mistake with God, God's providential. And in the opening prayer, I remember it being on my heart and praying about that pilgrimage, that lifelong pilgrimage mm-hmm. into the sacred heart of Jesus. And we're all, it doesn't matter if we're 90 years old, we're all still on that pilgrimage and that journey that there's no completion in that until hopefully and prayerfully we're eternally with the Lord in heaven. And so I think that that's important for all of us to recognize that, that hopefully we're always drawing closer to our blessed mother and always drawing closer to God and understanding more fully in, in our souls, who they are, like God revealing God's self to us more and more as we go. And the other thing that I think is is by no mistake is I felt compelled. You can see it on on YouTube, <laughs> but I felt compelled to grab my Rosary of Seven Sorrows and and hold mm. that today. I just yes. I just grabbed it very soon before we mm. recorded. And you talk about Mary being our our ultimate model, and we have her memories to pray mm-hmm. over and to ponder and to guide us. And we need no more than than the Lord. That I mean, mm-hmm. that is all we need. And and God has blessed us with our blessed mother. And so, so I think that's a beautiful invitation for all of us, including myself, to know that we will never find complete rest 
complete belonging, complete love. We will never find everything we need in other humans, even mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. when we have parents who are very faithful and healthy and married and all these things. And that's not to judge anyone else because because we're all we're all on a pilgrimage. But yes. my point is this is that there's still not a full sense of completion in that we can only find that in the Lord. And that separation is so important in our mind, body, spirit of understanding that like the Lord is where we need to go always. And the Lord Mm -hmm. will provide for us. The Lord will always redeem. And I just want to say really quickly, I did this talk once about how God redeems and I shared personal stories of my life because at least you can see that's like (laughs) what we do here. (laughs) But how is God really changing and transforming our lives? And I shared three of the most painful experiences of my life. Mm. The first one being my parents' marriage and divorce and how God has redeemed that. And how God has redeemed that in my life is is through my husband and my own marriage and that's still being redeemed. Mm. But honestly, I don't, I said this in the talk, like, I don't know that I would have known to to choose my husband. Like Mm -hmm. I I dated some really unhealthy guys and, and, Mm -hmm. and I wasn't necessarily healthy, like in high school and whatnot. And so like, but God revealed to me and, and through that experience, I came to know that I needed to choose a very good man, a Joseph, a man who loved the Mm -hmm. Lord fully and completely. So so there's a beautiful redemption there. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is the greatest mercy of my life that I'm married to my husband. <laughs> the Lord made it clear that uh, we are called to each other. We met when we were 19 and then we married when we were 26. You brought up the idea of memory. One of my favorite songs is called Wanting Memories, and it starts off with the line, I am sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty of the world through my own eyes. And why I love that song is because it does bring up this idea that Christ redeems through our wounds, that he transforms our wounds and that he glorifies them. And maybe it's not as simple as just remembering who we are, but that we are as Catholics on a journey to remembering our, our true identity, that Christ lives within us because of our baptism, because of our reception of the Eucharist and, and, and the sacraments. And having, I think it's been beautiful for me to have that confidence that maybe I don't always feel him close or feel him redeeming the situation because, as you know, it is an ongoing process of healing and navigating the situation of having two different families through, you know, one with my dad and one with my mom, you encounter many difficult conversations and situations, especially, uh, you know, we have my dad, my mom, and then Hunter has his mom's side of the family. She's remarried and has um, several children with her husband. And then he has his dad's side of the family. So we have a lot of family going on and navigating holidays gets holidays do get complicated. So all of that to say, I hope that provides encouragement for anyone who has experienced divorce, that although you may not feel this healing happening, that the Lord is restoring your memory. He is restoring um, the wounds inside of you. And it, it just takes time. It does. It does. And thank you for also bringing up the JP2 Healing Center. Is that the one you brought up or the Institute? Um, I love the JP2 Healing <laughs> Center, but um, the JP2 Institute is actually an academic institution in Washington, D.C. Yes, yes. I've heard wonderful things about both. And we had Nicole Rodriguez on mm. from the JP2 Healing Center. <laughs> yes. She's and it's very beautiful. And I, I just encourage you also brought up that other resource. What's the name of the other resource that you also said? Life-Giving Wounds. Okay. I want to look that up. I'm really excited to look that up, that there all are all these resources out there. And I want to also just point out kind of maybe even one more time that for everyone listening, because I always try to be sensitive and bring everybody into my heart who may be listening. And I know that everybody's in different circumstances that mm-hmm. at least the hope you give is both for those who are children of those who've been divorced, but also those who have been divorced, that God Mm -hmm. will redeem and will restore. Because I know that this is the most vulnerable area. And I know sometimes when I 
published podcasts on marriage, it's hard for some people just even looking at the the title that marriage is in the title because it touches so deeply on mm-hmm. a wound and sometimes even a feeling of failure for people. Mm-hmm. And I, I want I want that and I hope for that to be healed for people and for these resources are for everybody. And, and yes. God God wants healing for everybody. I've been so encouraged to uh, that in the last couple of years, I've seen more and more parishes providing divorce care for those who have having have gone through divorce. It is extremely vulnerable. It does bring a lot of feelings of shame and failure for those who have experienced it. But I hope that those who have experienced divorce themselves or within their family, that they know that the Lord just wants them home. They, he wants them in their arms. He wants them to receive him in the Eucharist. And I want to be clear that you have a home still within the church and uh, the Lord is waiting for you there. Yes. Yes. Amen to that. I, I so appreciate you saying that, Elise, because you talked about our identity and we all have the same identity in that way. Like mm-hmm. God has made us all unique, beautiful, glorious creations to be of and for him. Yet at the same time, we are the same in the sense that we are daughters and sons of the Lord and the Lord wants us home with the Lord, I think of like the prodigal son Mm -hmm. and that joy of the father Mm -hmm. when the son returns, that the Lord wants all of us home. And that's why the Lord is the good shepherd and goes Mm -hmm. after each person. And I recorded with Claire Dwyer. She's an author Mm -hmm. and and speaker. Mm -hmm. And she spoke about how God wants every part of us home. Mm -hmm. I thought that was, I never heard that. So it's not just God goes after the sheep, but God goes after every part of the sheep. That really Mm -hmm. impacted me as many Mm, of the things you're sharing are, are impacting me, Elise. How did this transition for you? Because now you have this very successful company that that has come from this understanding and this knowing of our identity as daughters of the Lord. And like I said earlier, often our our sufferings, when we bring them to the Lord in, through our healing, we are called. And mm-hmm. so how have you experienced that? Sure. So I started Ringlet in 2017. And during that time, my parents were, I was getting, I was getting married. My parents were uh, had just gone back together from their first separation. So there's a lot going on. But I made a decision that I really wanted Ringlet to be salt and light in the world, a bridge between the church and the culture. I am Catholic. My business partner is Catholic. However, we work with clients from all different types of backgrounds. We have employees from all different faith backgrounds. And we really have the honor of offering Christ to our team and to our clients through our services and how we treat them through our values at our company and through providing excellent work and and beautiful relationships. It's been amazing to see my team members grow in friendship and for our clients to have that relationships with Ringlet employees that are so fruitful. And I have grown in my understanding of spiritual motherhood Um, and growing Ringlet. I really started Ringlet because I was interested in entrepreneurship. I wanted to help these women who had small businesses scale and learn how to make more money through marketing. And now I really see my mission to help women tap into their own feminine genius and live out their own spiritual motherhood through growing their business. I think there is a beautiful generative aspect to creating a business. You are sharing your gifts and talents with the world. You're providing something that other people need. And that's been really neat to see that evolution that the Lord is showing me more and more how he is involved in this business and that we are hopefully sharing his will and himself with the world through our relationships that we've built at Ringlet. I love how you say through our relationships, because I think that's a beautiful reminder for all of us that through business, through socializing, through church, through everything, everything, every moment, it's an opportunity to build a relationship with others that comes from the relationship that we've built with Christ. And I see how you going through your own journey, Elise, and your openness to engage so fully in your own healing through all of these different ways that you've shared about, you ultimately have encountered Christ and that's what you're sharing. And that's so beautiful. Thank you so much. 
So where can everybody go to learn more about you and your company? Sure. So they can follow me on Instagram. I'm at Elise Crawford Gallagher. Uh, That's Elise, E-L-I-S-E, Crawford, C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D, and then Gallagher is G-A-L-L-A-G-H-E-R. And then you can find Ringlet at Ringlet Studio on Instagram. Awesome. I love how you spell it. I'm always doing that with mamas, <laughs> M-A-M-A-S. And even when I go like get a coffee and they say, what's your name? I always spell my name because L-I-N-D-Y, but it's it's not so, I mean, it's not anyways, no one, everyone's always asking, wait, what? <laughs> I get a lot of LCs. Yes. Or Alice's. Yeah. I get called Alice a lot. <laughs> yes. And then I ask everybody, Elise, do you have a favorite saint or one favorite saint of many? Ooh, that's difficult. Ringlet and... Catholic women in business are dedicated to Pope St. John the 23rd. And that's also our family uh, patron saint. He was the Pope who started the Second Vatican Council and really ushered in this new era of the church. Um, he is really wonderful. Um, of course, we love John Paul II. But recently, I have felt St. Zelly following me. I don't know if you feel uh, sometimes that saints are trying to, I feel like, like knocking on the door, like, hey, pay attention to me. So I need to buy a book <laughs> about St. Zelly and um, St. Louis Martin. I want to learn more about her. Um, she was a business owner and so was her husband. Her husband actually closed up his business and came to work for his wife and they had ran a business together and had five beautiful girls. And yes, so I, I want to learn more about St. Zelly. Oh, that's so beautiful. And that goes to show the pilgrimage that you you have another saint, a new saint on your heart now. And I love how you said your patron saint for your family. That is a glorious invitation for all of us. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. We've dedicated our um, family to him and our our missions um, at my husband as a lawyer and me as a business owner. We ask for his intercession. So beautiful. And then how about do you have a favorite scripture passage or prayer? Oh, that's also difficult. <laughs> um, I think learn from the way the wildflowers grow. That's just always been, you know, uh, one of my favorites. Learn how the wildflowers grow. Um, they neither toil nor worry, but the Lord knows exactly what they need. And if you are you not, learn from them. If you are not, you are more precious to the Lord than them. I love that. I actually came across that scripture passage not long ago, and it's so touched my heart. Mm. That's a beautiful, beautiful scripture passage. Thank you for sharing that. Of course, I need to do better with memorizing my scripture. (laughs) I'm sure that was not perfectly recited, but (laughs) this is probably this is probably providential. Fifteen years ago, my parents-in-law gave me a book about Mother Angelica, 2008. Mm. I saw it on the table today and cracked it open this morning. And she was talking about how we should read scripture for Mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to explain this well, but like (laughs) for the greatest, like for spiritually, we're reading it spiritually so that we know it in our souls and that we're doing like Ignatian contemplation, but putting ourselves in that scripture passage and knowing the depth of the story and how God is working in that in our own lives? Like how do we experience what is unfolding in these scripture passages in our own hearts? So when you bring up the wildflowers one, I'm not so concerned about you saying it (laughs) totally correct. But what I can tell is that it's touched your heart and it's guided you and it continues to guide you. That's very beautiful. Yes. And would you close us in prayer? Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Father and Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we open our hearts to you We offer you all of the messiness, um, all of the beauty, all of the woundedness that we have. Uh, May you continue to transform us every day in our encountering with you, that through our work, through our loving our family, through serving others, through receiving others, um, through our spiritual motherhood, and living out our feminine genius through our vocations, that we may grow closer to you, closer to your sacred heart, that you may give us the encouragement and energy that we need to do your will this day and all the days of our lives. We ask this through Mary, our mother, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pope St. John the Twenty-Third, pray for us.
Holy Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray for us. Thank you so much, Elise. And thank you for your encouragement to all of us to, to heal and to reach out to resources that can be helpful to us. And I know that I say this in most podcasts, but I think it's so important because different podcasts can kind of crack open different things from our own Mm. stories and from our own hearts that need more attention and more support for healing. So please reach out at any time. You can go to mamasinspirit.com or mamasinspirit at gmail.com. And I do pass on prayer intentions to our chaplain, Father John Meyer, and also pray for you. And those of you who have reached out do know that I do respond with resources and so and with help in any way that I can so please don't be shy about that because it's amazing how just you know in my own life like just an email or just a phone call or or just a a moment on a website can change everything because it holds within it a much greater invitation from God so you can also go to mamasinspirit.com for many more faith-filled podcasts and can't wait to be together again next time. This is Lindy Wynn with Mamas in Spirit. May God bless you and yours always.